Finesse, welcome to Sahab Initiative. Alhamdulillah. I'm thank you. Here. Thank you for joining us here all the way from Florida. Welcome to California. I just have to throw it out there for all the Floridans that are watching. California is the better state. So <laughs> <laughs> just, Oh, so we start off with violence. <laughs> yeah, 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 so we, we have to. We have to how, that's how you want to start off. We, we okay. have to. Our, our, uh, you know, our governor is debated on the stage, so <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's part. It's part of the part of the vibe. But uh, we're grateful to have you here. As always, we have our, our co-founder of Sob Initiative, Executive Director Malik Bendelum, and um, this is the first live podcast discussion we're filming in this way. Wow. You know, we've done many in the past. We've done it informally. We've had live discussions. Uh, you know, with the phone out there and everything, but this is the first production we're doing. So, oh, I'm happy so to be a part you're, of this. You're, you're part of the honored, part of man. the launch. <laughs> so, my my first question to you is, what's your story? How did you get to this place? You know, you have over 800,000 followers or something on TikTok and Instagram. I think he's keeping. I don't even know what and where it's at that. now. But there was something that brought you to this point. There's obviously, you know, they say that anybody that's successful at anything. There's also a deep struggle, and there's some deep pain. That's there's right. deep deepness to getting to the, them to that point. So, that's right. you know, what brought you here, and what was your motivation? You know, dribbling Dean. That's my motto. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, basketball and and uh, being a, uh, an American Muslim. You know, yeah. I grew up in a in the masjid and in the gym. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a, that's the system my dad um, made for me and my brother, um, and uh, that's the triangle that we had home. Masjid gym, mm. and so growing up with that that system, uh, it just followed through the mm. rest of our lives. And and me personally, you know, I've always been that guy that to uh, to try to 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 have the last joke. You know mm. what I mean? And, okay. and make people laugh the most. So, you know, being a basketball player and a, and, and a person that tries to practice Islam, and then having the the humors. The, the humor and that's how you're the chef too. yeah the shake shake halal also, bacon you're shake halal, shake halal. <laughs> <laughs> just, just that it's, it's funny you shake halal bacon is this is this brother is he serious <laughs> do any other shiuch get bothered by that <laughs> well you know I, I think if you if you're a shiuch if you're a sheikh then then of knowledge yeah then you should know that sheikh is a term um that is also meant for people who are old oh, yeah, yeah you know what i mean so yeah. it's not really a term specifically for a knowledgeable yeah. person yeah. and so i love halal bacon and i and i got that name from going on live i used to hook up uh uh couples and for marriage oh really yeah, yeah. so oh, i was very known for that yeah. um two years ago uh-huh. uh and um this one guy came online he was muslim he said yo i got a girl i said whoa 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 I said, you know, you got a girl. You said you didn't say wife. He said, yeah, man, I'm working on that. I said, whoa, 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 we don't eat haram bacon. We only eat halal bacon. And then, oh my God, the comments went crazy. Yeah. Then that was the birth of Sheikh Halal Bacon. So, so you were hooking up or you were halalifying? Right? Halalifying. I was halal- a halal hitch. Okay, okay. I was a halal hitch. Nice. Yes. <laughs> so you were you were there planting the seed, telling them, hey, you got to make. You got to get married. Yeah. We only eat halal oh, bacon. Okay. You know, it's either beef or turkey. Yeah. None of that khanzir. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no pork over here <laughs> so you said your triangle was gym masjid and what was the other and home we, we were homeschooled okay. so that that sounds wow. like that sounds like yeah. malik when you say that that's malik's life mm. yeah so so quite literally <laughs> yeah. we were homeschooled so there were five of us wow, homeschooled Allah. all the way until college wow gym master school nothing yeah. else Allah, that, was, that was literally for for all of us it's me my brother my wow. three sisters yeah. that was our entire life what, what did you do for to, to socialize because i know you know, so, so that that's the common misconception. They're like, man, you must not have talked exactly. to anyone. I get that you must be time. super socially <laughs> yes. awkward, huh? Yes, I get that all the time. <laughs> You're normal. Yeah. Yes. You're normal. How? Yeah. I, yes. It's like, man, I socialize just like everyone else. Yeah. Especially at the gym in the masjid. Yes. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. And, and you know, that, that was the beautiful thing about it because for me, you know, in, in a certain way, I feel like it kind of weeded out people that I probably shouldn't have hung out with to begin with. Mm-hmm. And that environment kind of naturally weeded out some of those people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it really kind of like made all of us really think about who we were around That's and right. kind of That's weed right. out those people that we shouldn't be around. Um, and honestly, you know, subhanAllah, man, it was a blessing. One of the biggest blessings that my parents gave me, alhamdulillah, was... Was, was homeschool. Homeschool mm-hmm. was amazing for me. You know, Absolutely. me and my two, uh, my stepbrother at the time, my twin brother, you know, we wake up, 
and start our day, Fajr obviously, and then we have Quran class. My dad will either bring a sheikh to the to the to the house or we'll go to the masjid. And then uh, we probably end up taking a nap until nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. We'll get up in our pajamas and get right to it. You know yeah. what I mean? Our first class every day was Islamic studies. Mm -hmm. We will read out of this book called uh, "What Is Islam All About," mm -hmm. or "What Is Islam," and um, and that was that built that that foundation of yeah. of of learning the deen. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And not being in an environment mm -hmm. that kind of watered down who you are as a Muslim. Yeah. You know, it really not not even watered down. It it just it's so detrimental. Yeah. It's it's just a steady, um, uh, you know, uh, pounding on our faith to be in certain environments. Absolutely. So I'm happy that my father and and you know made that sacrifice for us to not be in that environment yeah. as, yeah. as 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 students. You know what I mean? As, uh, as teenagers, because you know you know what we love as teenagers yeah. and and me us playing ball. Yeah. If I think that if we had been in the public school system. At the level of basketball that we were playing, it would have been a great fitness for us, mm -hmm. a great fitness. So we, we had to face fitness just at the games or at practices. And my dad was like, imagine if you all went to the gym. <laughs> actually went. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. we had, mashallah, we had scholarships, man, offers. Man, it's, they started coming in at around 10, 11, 10, 11 12 yeah. um, eight, eight years old. So, you know, basketball was just was the centerpiece of, of our of our home, mm -hmm. but Islam was the foundation mm -hmm. of that centerpiece. So I'm, I'm, you know, my kufi off to my dad. I, I kiss his hands and feet, man. Mashallah. Yeah, Mashallah. Yeah, may Allah bless and protect our parents. Amen. Cause, Amen. You know, it's, it's not easy, yeah. right? You know, having to teach, like, you know, in, in our five kids all day and figuring out how to ensure that not only they get the education that they need, but in a proper manner that their Islam is protected and at the right. base of everything. You're homeschooling your children? Uh, inshallah. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Alhamdulillah, not old enough yet, yeah, but, 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 but when we get that, there, That's inshallah. my plan, um, especially my old, two youngest. My, my, my oldest daughter, she's 12, turning 13. Mashallah. She's been homeschooled, alhamdulillah. Mashallah. And then um, my 11-year-old, he's, he's still in public school. Um, he has, you know, different needs. Yeah, yeah. And then um, my... Five-year-old and two-year-old, we're planning to homeschool them, oh, inshallah. Sure. So that's the plan. It's going to be difficult, of especially course, in, these, yeah. in these times with the with the economics and uh, course, you know. Yeah. It's, but we, I think I think homeschooling them is uh, is a great sacrifice to kind of protect and preserve not only their deen but their identity mm -hmm. um, as a Muslim because they're going to be exposed to it regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we want to try to fortify their iman in mm -hmm. the house yeah, so absolutely. that when they step out, they have enough. Uh, you know, iman or knowledge or understanding of who you are to kind of, kind of, you know, cope with the outside yeah, yeah, world in, in, in an Islamic way, but in a way that they understand what's going on. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, yeah. you know, especially like, so, so like for me, my, my mother, Allah she, Allah she converted to Islam. Oh, my God. And so she converted to Islam, you know, right out of college. And her whole family, Southern Baptist. Like, and when I say Southern Baptist, I mean the real deal. Southern yes, Baptist. I know. I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> my my I'm from grandmother Georgia. was in charge of the Sunday school curriculum for Ooh. all Southern Baptist churches in Birmingham. So, like, that was where we came from. And one thing that you know, like, my mother was always at the heart of, of what she taught us was, Islam is the greatest gift you'll ever have in your life. You'll get a lot. Of, you'll have a lot. Of, you have everything else, but. If Islam is like Islam is the greatest thing, and as long as it's in the center of whatever it is that you're moving for towards, yes. then that's going to become the greatest. That's thing right, too, mm, because that's right. its foundation is there. What a message, Marshall. Yeah. So Birmingham, yeah. Alabama. Yeah. You know, I had a scholarship to um, I think Auburn. Okay. And yeah. Alabama State. Mashallah. Yeah. When I went there, man, I was like, oh snap! It's we, something else. It's a different world. It's completely different. Respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I understand. Who is no joke? It's no joke, and 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 you know that's that's part of the Bible Belt. I'm from mm -hmm. Georgia, so you know my dad's from New York, so I got more of a New York swag, mm. and I got that from my dad. He 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 disliked the southern, uh, he just the the <laughs> accent, the way of life, way of thinking, because he different. you know New York is a little different. It's high yeah. beat. It's Yep. They, they they speak differently. They think differently. You know what I mean. And it's the exact opposite in the south. 
Everything exactly. in slow motion. Slow motion. Everything <laughs> is in slow motion. I used to say um, something like, what up, dog? Like, yeah. what's up, man? <laughs> My dad would say, dog. It's, it's dog. First of all, that's not a dog. That's a human. Say, what up, man? <laughs> Secondly, you're saying dog is dog, and he beat the <laughs> southern out of me. <laughs> and so, my, so, but my mom, she's from Georgia. Okay. She's from Dallas, Georgia. And so it was always a, that's why I, I can switch my, my slang up, because all of my siblings from my mom's side, they got that slang. Yeah. Okay? And um, I grew up with that in Atlanta, Georgia. So we have a crazy stuff, southern slang. But being homeschooled, Especially in the neighborhoods that I lived in, yeah. because we weren't the best uh, financially, you know what I mean. Yeah. So we lived in the hoods, hoods. Like who yeah. finesse yeah. is a hood dude <laughs> with a kufi on, okay? If it wasn't for Islam, yeah. if it wasn't for homeschooling, if, if it wasn't for my father sheltering me as much as he could from the environment that I was being raised in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would not be here. And Allah yeah. Allah knows yeah. best. Yeah. And, uh, and and that just led me right to my, my studies in Yemen, my, my, my studies in, in Saudi, my playing so ball. So what was that transition like? So you, you know, when you're done, what, when did you finish homeschool? Like 10th grade? Yeah, so actually uh, 11, 12th grade. 12th my grade? last year we went to W.D. Muhammad okay. in, in Atlanta. It's a private school okay. in Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, then what did you do after that? So after that... Um, we stopped playing ball. Like I say, we because it's so hard. You and your brother. Yes, your brother, yeah. my twin is. We just attached. Even yeah. right now, he's sitting. I'm, I'm his right man. So he's sitting right here, right now. I'm his right man. He's he's older, but I'm his right hand man. So I, I it's so hard for me to speak in first person. So uh, or you know singular person. Um, but after high school, for some reason, I just got spiritual. Mm. We had scholarships, subhanAllah, if I named some of the schools, okay, mm-hmm. I'm talking Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Kentucky was interested, Purdue, George Mason, Georgetown, um, uh, I mean, I can name them, Big, Big Ten, Pac-12, whatever, whatever, co- Big East, whatever conference, yeah. SEC, you name it. For some reason, we lost interest in the basketball. I didn't even want to play anymore. So, there, but you said there's some reason you got spirit. There has to be some yeah. reason. So we started reading. It, okay. it was, mm-hmm. was, so we started reading, and you know, the, the first verses in the Quran or Revelation is Iqra, mm-hmm. right? Read. And so we just started reading. I picked up the book, and um, it, I'll never forget this book. Changed my life. Uh, Purification of the soul. Mm-hmm. And so is that the, one with the waterfall. Yes, that, you know, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That book yeah. really changed the perspective. My perspective of life, of the purpose. Like, I, we know as Muslims, we worship Allah, that's our purpose, but it, yeah. it, it kind of opened up the gateways of spirituality for yeah. me. So then I was like, I don't want to play ball. Then my dad was confused. He was like, <laughs> get the book in the book. <laughs> if you want, get the book. And then if you want the book, hire the Sheikh, he'll travel with you to all your <laughs> NBA games. We got to go to the NBA. We, we were really projected to go in the NBA. But yeah. anyway, we, me and my brother, we just, we just were overcome with the love of Islam. So we went to Yemen mm. right out of high school. Uh-huh. We were 18, 19 years old. Probably the best basketball Yemen. players in Yemen. Oh, man. <laughs> Look, <laughs> we, could, we still couldn't run away or escape from basketball. Yeah. Guess what? We ended up on, on a basketball team. Yeah. Right. We ended up playing on a national bat that we played for the Munta Khabul Yemen. We played for the national oh, wow. Yemeni basketball team. I didn't even know they had a basketball team. Yes. <laughs> and we were the only team, the only Yemeni team to beat Saudi Arabia. Wow. Oh. To this day, they remember that game. We're still the only <laughs> Yemeni team to beat Saudi Arabia. We heard them crying. Our locker rooms were across from each other. We heard them crying and welling because Yemen beat Saudi. <laughs> Are you serious? Years later, I go to um, my first practice at Halal. You heard, have you guys heard of that ball cl- that club in, yeah. in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia? Mm-hmm. My first practice, uh, the players are meeting, they come into the practice, and all I heard was, Yo, Salam, To'am, you're the To'am, you're the twin. I said, who are you? He said, I said, my nuns. He said, you have a twin, right? I said, yeah, I got a twin. He said, Muhammad Wala Musa. I said, Muhammad. I said, who are you? He said, man, Bekena, Bekena, Bekena. We <laughs> cried, we cried, we cried because of you. Y'all beat us, Yemeni beat us. 
I said, I still don't know what y'all want. He said, in Morocco, we had a tournament, and Yemen beat us, and we were crying. The coach got fired. We all, we were like, all our bonuses was taken. It was crazy. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. And um, subhanAllah, but at the high school, mm -hmm. we just lost, we just gained this, this strong love for Islam. Yeah. And what, what part of Yemen did you did We you went to, to all over, mashallah. Oh, mashallah. We, our yeah. first was Tanim. Mashallah. We went to the Hadramot. Um, Tareem, and uh, we studied with the Habayib, the Dar Mustafa, yeah. Habib uh, Mustafa, Habib Omar, Masha Habib Allah. Omar, Habib Jeffrey. Masha so we studied with them, we studied Arabic, we, we went to um, the Arabic Institute there, mm -hmm. and then from there we went to Sana'a, mm -hmm. and we studied with a, a few other local scholars, mm -hmm. and, um, and then that's when I went to Andalus University mm -hmm. to, to complete my Arabic studies. Mm -hmm. uh, my whole goal was to like, Spend at least five to seven years there, mm -hmm. out of high school, uh, perfect Arabic, get a, at least an alum uh, mm -hmm. certificate from mm -hmm. the. There was a madrasa that mm -hmm. was sisters with Medina University. Mm -hmm. That all the sisters, sis, all the students that weren't accepted to Medina, mm -hmm. that was the next school to go to. Mm -hmm. It was it's right there, Saudi yeah. Yemen, right there, yeah. and it was so cheap. And um, and I was like, yo, I'm going here. So, but they said, listen, Muhammad, you need one more semester or two in Arabic, and that's when I went to Andalus University. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. I love Yemen. My heart is still in Yemen. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Two, but some of the best years of my life was in Yemen. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. It's such a beautiful place. Yes. Allah, you know, there's so many hadith of the Prophet love them, praising love the people of Yemen and, and Yemen. Yeah. I, used to, I used to, it got to the point where I used to, like, I love my adhkar at the salah. Yeah. Okay, I don't like to move until I finish my adhkar at the salah. Oh, yeah. But in Yemen, I'm dipping because I get invited. Yeah. I'm eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner mm -hmm. at someone, some stranger's house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, man, I, as an American, I'm like, yeah, yeah. but then I'm like, Masha, he's a Muslim. We're yeah. dealing with different people. Yeah, yeah. Res respect to Americans, respect to who I am and the culture. But in Yemen, they were so generous. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will be walking to school. And these group of guys will be eating their fusulia with the bread and whatever. Ta'al! Ta'al You know, eat with us. You know, you know, cool ma'ana. I'm like, all right. And they get offended if I say, all right, I take a few scoops and I'm, I'm off to school. I have breakfast. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that was my experience. And i never forget my first, my first experience was when I landed in Sun'a. Everyone had these big donkey jaws, okay? <laughs> I call them donkey jaws because they love uh, cot. Yeah. You know uh, cot? Yeah. <laughs> I said, yo, what's wrong with their mouths? They said, yeah. bro, nothing. Perfectly <laughs> healthy. They're just chewing yeah. these things, these, this, this plant. Yeah. That was my first experience. <laughs> and I still love my Yemeni brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I still love my Yemeni brothers. But they love that plant, man. Mashallah. Oh, yes, man. Mashallah. Mashallah. Some of the most underrated desserts in the world oh, are Yemen. from Yemen. Yemen. Sabaya. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the, the architecture, coffee. Yes. Oh, yes. the coffee, the tea, the <laughs> engineering, the yeah. architecture of the build, the history of Yemen is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I put it up there with Turkey because I've been to Turkey. And the history and, and uh, the age that Turkey has is, is, is also like amazing. But Yemen is so underrated, man. Yeah. SubhanAllah, man. We, so we, we went to this place called Darul Hajar, mm -hmm. the, the house of the stone or the rock. It was a home carved into a mountain. Mm -hmm. And they had an air conditioning right, yeah. system without no motor. It's the way they cut the window. They had this little slide coming and then the bars with the air. And as soon as you open that slide to let the air go through, it's blown in your face. Mm. Not a motor, a wire in sight. That's, that's human engineering. You know? Amazing, amazing. Yeah. I, I used to love Tori. And because we played on the basketball team, um, uh, what, was, what was I think Badr, Team Badr or whatever that team was. <laughs> so it was... How did you get into the training? Did they invite you into the training? So we're playing at, at this the school, Dar yeah. Mustafa. There was a court out there. Mm -hmm. And we're playing, and just the news grew. Before you know it, we had a crowd of people watching us play. Because yeah. they probably never seen it yeah. like, like that. And then there was agents right there or players of like, listen, man, you want to play on the team? And at first the school said, no, no outside activities. But then the coach or whatever was like, listen, there's no money involved. Let the guys play. It's not interfering with the schedule. 
let them play, you know. And, and we played and we traveled oh, all. We went to Ib, that is, um, uh, uh, Seyun. We went to um, uh, Sanaa, of course. We went to uh, Aden. Oh, we ate the fish in Aden. The, oh, Aden, yeah. the whole culture there. They have their own little. It's like it's like Santa Bernardina. Bernardina. <laughs> yeah. It's a different road in Aden. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And Ib, all the the, the 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 scenery, the greenery in Ib and in, in Taz, amazing. Yemen is beautiful. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, yeah. the yeah. situation there is... May Allah give them... Amen. 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 So, Allah so, you, so you mentioned purification of the heart. Now, that yeah. book, a lot of people have said that book has changed their life, right? Yes, it's, I've heard sure. it many times, even like when you're starting Sahab Initiative, and many people who were reading that book. I know people that came out of prison, that book, like... Early volunteers were like yes. that book changed my life. Yes. So what was it for you? What what drew you in in that book? Um, it um, I remember one chapter that comes to mind. Uh, it speaks about the four poisons of the heart, mm -hmm. and then it speaks about the the uh, the what the the, the nafs nafsul mutmainna nafsul amar to besu. You know yeah. the different types of nafs desires that we have. And how we can conquer those things, or how it could be a beast that can lead you straight to Jahannam. Just how they broke down the physical body into yeah. a spiritual, something spiritual, according to the Quran and the Sunnah. The, my, the, the whole spiritual, my spiritual spirituality started with that book. Mm. You know what I mean? Actually, I kind of want to read that book again. It's been years. <laughs> oh, it's a classic. But man, book. just, yeah, just yeah. to reread that book and, and go from cover to cover, um, I used to be like a bookworm when it came to. Um, all books, but especially Islamic literature. Mm -hmm. But that was that was the book that did it, mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. That was definitely the book that did it. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. So, you know, I, I think I went to, through a very similar phase reading that book, and then my, you know, my day job, I work in marketing. And one of the biggest challenges with reading a book like Purification of the Heart is you're constantly like reflecting on your nafs. You're like, what yes. does this have to say, mm -hmm. right? And then you get to down to the concept of of riyah, just the idea of riyah. showing off, yes. right? Yes. You're like, it's like the hardest thing. You have to be out there, yes. but you also have the to dinner, yeah, take, control it. Yes. So now we live in this world, like 10 years ago, no one would have predicted how much social media would have just, has just taken over, right? You cannot yes. function without it. Yes. And you have to put yourself out there in whatever level to make a change, right? You know, it's just, it's just impossible. You have a business, you have to put yourself out there, you know? Yes. If you're uh, trying to educate people, you got to put yourself out there, otherwise yes. you're not going to educate. So what was that journey like for you, going from that spirituality and then now... Building this, you know, this machine on on the internet. To, to be honest, it took a lot. People don't notice. Like I always loved like um, staging, um, cine cinematography. Mm -hmm. I've always liked that, um, but I was never a fan of of social media. Mm -hmm. My sister, my oldest sister, in fact, she's the one who created my first social media account, which was Facebook. Oh. I was the only one in the family that didn't have one, mm -hmm. and so um, I was in Saudi Arabia. Um, playing ball and I was teaching English mm -hmm. and my students said uh, yeah 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 Ustad like you're, you're funny you're very funny you have to download Snapchat <laughs> I said Snapchat what is Snapchat and then that kind of sparked my love for documenting funny yeah. moments mm -hmm. highlighting certain moments certain the certain way I taught the class from outside of the book that we was I would take the lesson and teach it in my own way. Mm -hmm. And so it it became like people I, I got offers from like other schools just from my Snapchat. It was mm -hmm. it was but I deleted Snapchat yeah. for many personal reasons. <laughs> but that was the spark yeah. of my social media journey. Mm -hmm. Not the Facebook page that my, my sister created, but it was Snapchat. I saw the benefit in it. Mm -hmm. The the smiles, the reaction of people, mm -hmm. um, just highlighting some of the moments that I had with the right. students. And then, like, that was the English side. And then the Islamic side started when COVID happened. Uh, right before COVID, uh, um, uh, my teach, my, I, I was teaching, I came from Saudi, and I was stuck in, in the States, so I had to get a job or whatnot. And I was teaching at this institute. Mm -hmm. And the, the students said, you teacher, you're very funny, you should download TikTok. So I, I looked up TikTok. I said, guys, it's a dancing app. Does it look like I dance? Does it really look like, do I dance? Are you serious? They said, no, teacher, it's more than a dancing app. 
And so months later, uh, right before COVID happened, I ended up downloading TikTok. Me and my wife did a video too, and it went viral. And I was like, oh wow, this is like Snapchat, but a little, little, little different. Yeah. <laughs> and so that was my transition of being private and you know putting myself out there publicly um, was was easy because I think my Nia mm-hmm. was like, okay. I'm not gonna show off whatever I have. Yeah. I'm gonna make people smile, and I'm yeah. gonna use a dean to do it. Yeah. So it kind of made it easy, and obviously we still have to check our nia because yeah. riya can be in any form. Yeah. It can be with salah, it can be with making wudu, it can be with helping yeah. the needy. If you're doing it for other than Allah, that's the riya. That's to show off. Yeah. So it that's the only challenge yeah. I would say. Not the transition of being in the public eye wasn't a problem, but it's, yeah. it was the the, the, the nia. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So one thing that I know about social media is that. A lot of people, a lot of young people, they're like, "This is the way to go." I, I took a chance. I said, "Listen, I'm going to use basketball and try to incorporate the dean to intertwine basketball because the youth love basketball." Uh-huh. So when I quit my job, I was like, "Listen, I can't, I can't be a full time teacher and a full time." Um, you know, social media influencer. First of all, I was like, well, "You're still a teacher, though." Yes, right? like social media influencer. <laughs> like that's still to this day. It sounds weird. The kids be like, "You're a YouTuber." I'm like, "A YouTuber? Am I really a YouTuber? <laughs> I'm more than that." You're a teacher, you're a teacher yeah. in a different space. So exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. So teaching English was was something like it was amazing. I I love socializing, and actually in college, one of my the 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 subjects that I excelled in was social, sociology, social studies. I, w- I wanted to actually be a social worker, but then I you know, changed my, my degree to English because um, I, I, loved, I loved English. And I had this plan. I said, listen, I'm getting old. By the time I graduate college, I'm going to be around 24, 25 because you know, we went to Yemen. We yeah. started college late. And w- w- what if I don't play professional basketball? W- w- I was like, oh, I want to teach English. Mm-hmm. So, alhamdulillah, you know, Downloading TikTok and doing those videos, you know, with my wife, it went it went viral, and I was like, okay, maybe I can do some more videos. And just then I started with like these in Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu and Astaino, those type of videos. I was like, you know, this ain't natural. Right? <laughs> this is really not natural. I, I'm not a scholar. Uh, I'm I'm you know I'm a student of knowledge. I love Islam, but I'm not gonna present. A persona that's false. <laughs> I, was, it, I can't even reach myself with that. <laughs> you watch it's, the video a few times, and you're just like, "This is me." This ain't me. Yeah. So I said, "You know what? I have to come up with a better idea because I still wanted my social media to to be like I wanted the element of Islam to be in my social media, regardless. Yeah, regardless of what I did. So whether it was basketball or or, or humor, I was like, oh, basketball humor. I said, that's who I am naturally. So why not? And so then that's when I started to. To garner, to garner this like this large following, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know what? I'm going to quit my job, take my chances with social media, because then I'll I'll be more accessible to not only like the umma, but the kids and having these basketball camps, traveling. Yeah. I'll be loose. I'll be free yeah. to travel. And alhamdulillah, it's 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 reached yeah. to reach to the point where, you know, it's been you know self sustaining. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yeah. alhamdulillah. So when you think about all the content you have to create, like what is that? What is your day like? I mean, yeah. So surprisingly, like I, I give a challenge, and I can. Hey, my phone is over there, but I always challenge people, like how much time do you do you spend on social media and stuff? The average time I spend is like fifty minutes to like an hour. If it goes past an hour on social media, on on any on any uh, platform, I think I spend too much in a day. Uh-huh. But I do a lot of video recording and editing, uh-huh. so I post and go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I post and go, and then, you know, my interaction with social media is is here and there. I try to come, I try to answer DMs as much as possible. I try to interact with my followers, but most of my day when it comes to social media is is shooting the video and mm-hmm. editing it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's such a task, and yeah. it's not easy because you have to come up with the concepts and all that. Yeah. You know, I work with a lot of companies, and I like I only deal with Muslim companies for a reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I choose to deal with Muslim companies. Um, I have opportunities to deal with non-Muslim companies, mm-hmm. but I choose to target the Muslim co- companies for my own reasons. You know, mm-hmm. fisabilillah. You know, 
And so I deal, like, you know, I'm in these WhatsApp groups or whatever with these executives, these owners or whatever, and they try to come up with ideas for my video, right? <laughs> and I'm laughing, and it works every time. And at the end of the day, at the end of the conversation, I'm like, it's not as easy as it, as it looks, yeah. huh? And they be laughing. It's very difficult to not only think of an idea, but to execute it and then, like, put it on the screen. Yeah. And Hopefully you get 100k views, 200k views, 300k views. That's the that's the goal for most of these companies, and uh, and it's not easy. Well, why is that? You have really, you really have to be yourself and, and let it come naturally. And and it's not it's not it's not for everyone. You know, some people are mathematicians, scientists, and some people are just Kevin Hart's. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's funny. Some of these guys, people have to go through the struggle too, right? Yes. People shouldn't give up, right? No. There's people that are out there that. They just haven't figured it out yet, yes. and they give up too soon. Right? Yes, yes. Um, you know, there's a lot of comedians like that. They can't do stand up really well, but they're yes. still funny on they're TV. Still funny. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And I, I always tell people they, they they ask for my advice of you know you know dealing with social media, growing a platform. I said find a niche and make sure that niche is something that you enjoy mm -hmm. naturally, enjoy, yeah. and also your audience enjoy. Yeah. I think that's the perfect combination of sustaining um, a long term. Uh, you know, growth with social media because social media is draining, Habibi. Yeah, yeah. It's it's no joke, especially now, with the, comments. the mental health are part of it too, right? People people lose themselves. Yes. The, the, the jealous. They say you know, there's actually each social media platform has a vice tied to it, right? Yep. So yep. Instagram is envy, yep. right? You yep. know, Twitter yep. is like yep. you have no self control. The dark right? side. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So all of them are tied to that. And you are allowing your nuffs to be drawn in when you don't control this is, yourself. This is why I like. I try to my best to. To, um, you know, I never, I never knew why certain like celebrities, big time names, they never interacted with the comments. Yeah. You never see them like comments or even interact. And now I know why. Yeah. <laughs> I know why. I have, I have almost two million subscribers on YouTube. Alhamdulillah. I have two point five million on TikTok, yeah. and I have like six hundred k on Instagram. Yeah. That's three platforms. That I have to manage, I have to answer DMs mm -hmm. to, I have to com respond to comments. Because yeah. how? Yeah. How? And the people get mad because they, they keep DMing me. I see your DMs, but I can't respond. There's no way I can respond yeah. because now you respond to my response. Imagine like a thousand other DMs from, I don't even look in uh, Facebook, I don't even open that app, I don't even open up Twitter. It's what, too much. What do you post on YouTube? So I've seen your TikTok stuff. So is it just shorts or do you have... So I, I, it, it depends. Some content goes on across all boards, uh -huh. like especially if it's a marketing, if it's for like a company. But I, like you said, there's different platforms have literally different yeah, communities, yeah, yeah. different demographics. Mm -hmm. So there's certain videos that won't make it to my YouTube. There's certain videos that might not make it to my uh, TikTok. For yeah. whatever reason, I just kind of... You kind of learn your niche on each... Mm -hmm. On each platform, yeah. so I kind of know like what to post and what not to post on each platform, and uh, it, it like like TikTok, they're like, they're they're like the more religious side. TikTok and Instagram, they're very like the self righteous. Like, oh, Habibi, if you're so pious, why are you on social media? <laughs> like, why even here? Like, you're supposed to be in a masjid reading the Quran right now, but you're busy on social media. Being, you know, YouTube is more is more open. It's more like okay, this I still have the religious audience. But it's still like more like okay, we're all humans, yeah. we're all Muslim, you know. But yeah. man, the the Muslim community on social media, man, I've seen, I've seen comments chase new Muslims away mm. from the deen. Yeah. Literally go from nani jab, take her shahada, she becomes hijabi, then to revert back because she said it's too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just somebody should have, like, should encourage new Muslims, especially influencer Muslims that become Muslim, please don't post nothing, just learn your deen first. Yeah. And then, so now you can kind of combat the comments. The comments gets crazy. Yeah. So, so now you, you, know, you, have the, you have this wide reach, you have social media reach, you're in the community more with people. I want to bring it down to a, a, a more uh, difficult topic mm. is, what are the struggles you're seeing that are in the communities? What, what are the struggles you're seeing within Muslim communities, families, social ills? What is it? I mean, I, you know, mm. times have changed. So yes. things that are, there's new issues that arise. Yes. Um, it, it, it boils down to the youth. Mm -hmm. um, um, their identity is 
to have a crisis identity at a very young age. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're talking from like as young as six, seven years old all the way to, to high school. Mm -hmm. and they, you know, I see a lot of kids, um, they get into these cages, yeah. they, uh, you know, transform. You know, that I call them transforming Muslims, and yeah. we all have that transformer inside of us from here to there. Um, but just that identity as a Muslim, I think, I think there's a crisis in that area. There's a struggle. Cohesiveness in Muslim communities. There's so many, there, there's like messages. I've seen messages right next to each other, and they're like, don't even deal with each other. No. They're, they're in competition with each other. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you serious? We're all Muslim. We, we all pray to the same Lord. We all have the same agenda, the same um, goal, which is to please Allah, to reach Allah and Jannah. You know, in the mu'minun ikhwa, for aslihu bayna akhwaykum. Allah says that 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 you know the believers are but one brotherhood, so reconcile between each other. Yeah, but yeah. as we see the opposite mm -hmm. amongst the Muslim communities in these big communities, so cohesiveness is one of the bigger bigger issues I've seen too. Yeah. I always thought you know if you have a business. Don't go after your competitors' customers. Increase your customer base, right? Yes. You have a masjid, expand, expand the people that you're reaching. Yes. You want to reach more yeah. people. That's why, uh, you know, if you, if you notice, yeah. if you ever notice, you see like uh, furniture stores, mm -hmm. it'll never be one furniture store by itself. You'll always see a bunch of other furniture stores. You see a mattress store, yes. you see five other mattress stores next to them. And that's because they did studies and they found that if we're all next to each other, we bring in more people, more people. and we're more likely to get more, more as opposed to if I'm isolated here. Isolate. Yeah. Just only trying to come. Exactly. To and and as, I see so many messages when I travel. I've been doing this for like almost going on four years now, and I went to the I, East Coast, West Coast, North, South, Midwest, all over, and I, I see like a lack of cohesiveness. Mm. It's so competitive, so political, so what about my message? What, what, you know, I'm like, subhanAllah, just come together. Let's do it together, you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's, it, it's a big issue amongst the Muslims. Then, the, 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 then we have Pakistani messages. Mm. We have African messages, Nigerian messages, Somali messages. Arab messages. We, uh, you know, I've I've only been to a few messages that's like completely diverse, mashallah, mm -hmm. like D DMV, mm -hmm. Dallas, mashallah, um, Chicago. Mm -hmm. I've been to like a pretty diverse uh, messages, but for the most part, man, I've seen like isolated. Yeah, yeah. I would say that I think that's definitely the American demographic. But Southern California, I would say we're sort of the I don't want to say we're the exception, but we're, we're the outlier in a lot of the different spaces. Oh, Our community Allah. is very different. I, th I think the measured beef has yeah. kind of died. I don't know of any two measures yeah. beefing as That's much good. anymore. No, not, not anymore. Yeah. We, we had it, yeah. you know, 90. And how did you love? Oh, I've yeah, seen some measured beefs. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. in the measured after yeah. Juma. They, <laughs> they yeah. wait. Well, so they no, 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 there's inside measured, but between two masjids, I think some of that stuff has died down. People have become more forward thinking, at least in the area. And we're seeing a real investment, but I think the challenge is really being able to speak to the youth. That's a challenge, especially for even the young imams. You got people that have studied Richly. overseas. They come in and they want to give a lecture to this kid, and this kid is like, you know, thirty second. Uh, he has a attention span of a fish. Yes. Yeah. This is why I went from in Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu and astainu. This is why we're from that yeah. respect, respectfully. I love my shiuch. I love my scholars. Yeah. You know, they preserve, Allah uses them to preserve the deen. Yeah. But that's why I went from that to the type of content that I make now. Yeah. Because I, I notice, and Allah alam, Allah knows best, that the content I, that I make, the kids can re relate to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. They resonate with that content way better and more efficiently than uh, an hour lecture in the masjid. Yeah. You know, if, if, you go, if you go to a lecture in the masjid after Mughal to say a tafsir class, I don't think you'll see anybody under 30, under 20. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless uh, they're forced to be there. Unless they're forced <laughs> to be there. I, I don't, I, I, you know, but if you say, hey, we have a basketball uh, event, a basketball game from Maghrib to Isha, right. but after Maghrib, you know, there's a little talk, you're going to see the, the message filled with you. Yeah. They don't so, listen to that So when you, when you try to give a message, let's say you want to give a message to a young person, Let's say, don't do drugs. Okay. All right. That's that's a hot concept, and you want to yes. get that message out on TikTok. Okay. So, w what do you do? So <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 build the the concept of the video about not doing drugs. So maybe I'll play a druggie. <laughs> I'll literally play a druggie, and I'll show you the downfall of yeah. me being a Muslim on drugs. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm gonna play. Um, I might put some 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 uh, <laughs> some like powder. I'm, just, I'm straight up. 
How loud Dave Chappelle or sit up, you know, and, and so they can see the reality. You know what I mean? I, I'm not going to give a lecture. You know, and, and there are some TikTok shakes. I call them TikTok shakes. May Allah preserve them. But there are some TikTok dyes or Instagram or social media dyes that do get to the youth because, um, because, of, because of, or their background. They may have the same background of the youth. And, but then they changed. They went from the streets to the masjid. Those are the type that will resonate with the youth. I think youth that's a UK well. thing too. I hear that in the UK. Yes, they come out there and they talk about don't join gangs and stuff. Yeah. But I don't. California, maybe the youth are into different things. Yeah. You know, you're materialism. Yeah, yeah. There's other things that draw you in, and you're yes. like, it's harder because yes. the aggression doesn't appeal to them, the aggression. right? Aggression. You you yeah. yelling if you yell over here, you're like, bro. <laughs> The parents are pulling everybody out. Everybody, you won't be, they won't be attending your lecture again. You know what I mean? It's just, a, it's a different vibe over yeah. here. It's, there's a different way. We love, like, the youth love humor. Yeah. They love sports. Yeah. It's a win-win. Absolutely. So if, if a scholar, like, I've seen, like, um, Muftis, um, one of my dear friends, Muftis Rafiq, Masha, have you heard of Muftis Rafiq? He's up in uh, Long Island, New York. Okay. Oh, okay. He actually, I think I see him on TikTok. Yes. Yeah. He plays with the youth. Okay. Imagine this Mufti, this grand Mufti, mashallah. Yeah. I mean, he knows the Quran. He's an Arthur. Yeah. I mean, he does it all. Um, but he's throwing footballs. He's yeah. hooping. He can play. Yeah. So the, the youth, they look at him not only as a scholar, but man, this dude is cool. Yeah. He can play. He beat me one on one. He humbled me, a scholar humbling me. He's not a, like this this, this 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 scholar who just sits down on the cushion, and 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 yells and shouts uh, uh, verses of the Quran and, and a hadith. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna play soccer with you. I'm gonna play football. Yeah. And the youth, I see, they love him. I have a few camps with them, and I've seen like Imam Imam Omar Suleiman. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the other Imam in Dallas who played ball with? Um, Newman mm -hmm. Ali Khan mm -hmm. playing ball in, in the urban masjid over there in, in, in urban uh, uh, Texas, uh -huh. playing ball. That's yeah. what the youth want. Yeah. So even if you like the scholar, even if you can't play sports, yeah. be out there with them. Yeah. Yeah. Kick a little ball. Try to shoot. Yeah. Something. Something. Yeah. This is what they want. Yeah. yeah. You know, Absolutely. humor. They, like, if, if you say, I, I give you an example. If you say LeBron James is coming to play Mangarup at this masjid. LeBron James, he's not Muslim, mm -hmm. he's pro-Israel. Yeah. Give an announcement on Juma, LeBron James is coming tonight at the Maghrib. And, but there will be a tafsir, but LeBron James will sit and listen to the tafsir. <laughs> It'll be packed. Yeah. With who? The youth will be like, Mom, Dad, I'm going. Yeah. For, cancel everything, cancel our plans. LeBron James is coming to the masjid yeah. to the tafsir class. You see the, see the impact that sports yeah. have, yeah. okay? And so that's what, that's what we should use. The Prophet says, okay. speak the language of the people. Mm -hmm. It's not just, not, and I, I interpret it, may Allah forgive me for wrong, I'm not a scholar, yeah. but it's not just from the tongue, yeah. your actions, your, your, your coach, the culture, the understanding of who, the, who you're targeting mm -hmm. in terms of giving da'wah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, I think that's the angle I came from when it came to with social media. And I know, you know, you talked a lot about, um, you know, basketball, kind of bringing it all together. You mentioned that you have these camps. Can you tell us maybe a little bit about kind of the evolution, how you started creating these camps and kind of what they look like? It started, you know, Stephen Jackson? Yeah. So uh, we're in Atlanta. Uh, uh, Stephen Jackson, mashallah, may Allah preserve him. Mm -hmm. He invited us to his, to his home mm -hmm. and we broke bread, man. We had dinner and, you know, we were talking about the dean and everything. And then I was like, um, guys, between me my brother Musa and Steven Jackson, let's do a, a tour, a basketball tour. Mm -hmm. Let's go to different Masajid mm -hmm. and hold camps. Yeah. They couldn't do it. They were too busy. Musa was going back to play pro. Mm -hmm. Steven Jackson, obviously, he has his all of smoke and yeah. he has his podcast and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And so I was like, you know what? If y'all don't want to do it, <laughs> I'm going to do it. And oh, sure. by Allah's permission, um, I started to reach out to Mistress. Tampa was the first one. And it was a success, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna use this and say, hey, I did it with Tampa. Mm -hmm. And then, mashallah, Epic came and the one yeah, in Dallas. Yeah. Oh, sure. And before I know it, it was a snowball effect. And then oh, yeah. I'm just, yeah. to, this, to that, mm -hmm. to that, though, you know, to that dinner that we had with Jackson, 
until now I've been doing the basketball camps. How many now? And how long ago was that? This was uh, 2021, I think. 2021? Yeah, uh -huh. I think so. Alhamdulillah. So we don't want to keep you too long. We really appreciate having Thank Goop you. Finesse on the podcast. Thank you. He's going to get to Laguna Beach. You're going to yes. head on, check out the yes. beach. Yes. Southern California Beach. Inshallah, and yes. Inshallah, he's spending the, the weekend uh, with us. We're doing food distribution tomorrow for Arafah. So yes, inshallah. It's going to be Inshallah. beautiful, Allah inshallah. Eat Mubarak, guys. Thank you guys for having me. Shout out to Sahaba Initiative. Let's go. <laughs> it's halal bacon time. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a mashallah? Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs>